Michigan State University versus the University of Michigan. A rivalry that dates all the way back to October 12, 1898, when the Michigan Agricultural College Aggies made the trip to Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines to officially kick off one of the greatest rivalries in the Big Ten and all of college football. In the early 1900s, the rivalry was in its infancy. But when the Spartans captured a 12-7 win, their first victory against Michigan in Ann Arbor of 1913, the yearly meetings began to carry a little more meaning. Just two years later, the Spartans added more fuel to the fire with a 24-0 shutout in Ann Arbor. As the years went on, the rivalry continued to grow. Regardless of the score, the schools separated by less than 70 miles played for bragging rights and control of the state on the line. The maize and blue and the green and white faced off to determine who had the right to boast until the next meeting. The rivalry took off for the Spartans in the 50s, with MSU winning in 1953 in the first meeting that featured the Paul Bunyan Rivalry Trophy. Michigan State won seven of the Michigan matchups in the 50s that helped lead to three national championships. Things are certainly going to the liking of Michigan State. This time the right halfback Billy Wells takes the ball, backs over left tackle, and powers his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Michigan State goes into the lead, 19 to 13. Music with the ball, dropping back to throw forward pass. He pitches one out to Leroy Bolden, who's in the end zone with the ball for a touchdown for the Spartans. This is a sad moment on the Michigan bench. Leroy Bolden, the fullback, taking the handoff with good blocking in front of him. Aims for that corner in the goal line, and he makes it. Michigan State has scored. The Spartans kept the upper hand in the rivalry throughout the 60s, where the green and white once again beat the Wolverines seven times in the decade, with three shutouts and added two more national championships to their resume. For decades, the team continued to trade wins, with each rivalry victory adding more of them and passion for both fan bases. That competitive fire continued to rage as time went on, with classic games, memorable moments, and unforgettable victories. Second down from the nine. Tico Duckett, five, four, touchdown, Michigan State. Jeff Smoker. Takes the shotgun snap, throws to his right, wants to throw back left, and does. It's up for grabs in the end zone. It is caught. It's caught by TJ. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans win. The Spartans win. TJ's been snowed under by his teammates in the end zone. Here's Banks. Rushed out of the pocket. On the run. To Mason. Touchdown, Michigan State. As the Paul Bunyan Trophy was continuously uprooted from his part-time home to Ann Arbor and East Lansing, the Spartans finally gave him a stretch of stability in recent history, with MSU asserting their place in the state and the nation with wins over the Wolverines in seven of the last eight contests. Today, the prestigious universities and premier football programs prepare for the 109th meeting in this storied rivalry. The game has evolved from a circumstance of geographical convenience to one that garners the national spotlight and big game billing each year, as these two programs that share a state battle it out for prime positions in the Big Ten and the nation. The rivalry with Michigan has roots going all the way back to 1898. But during those years, the Spartans have had few stretches as successful as the last eight years. 
But Brian Hoyer will play fake it, toss it left side to Josh Rouse. Touchdown, MSU! Caper, cutting it back. Caper, breaks the tackle, got a first down, to the house, touchdown! Michigan State has won! Intercepted by Isaiah Lewis, touchdown, Spartan! Watch the throw, no time! He is swarmed! Swarmed by the Spartan! Oh, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free! It's picked up by Michigan State. Jalen wants Jackson, and he scores! On the last play of the game! Unbelievable! The rivalry is everything, I think, especially to, to this campus when you look at just the history of it. You know, um, of course, me being a student here, I got to experience that feeling firsthand. I mean, there's nothing like rivalry week. When you talk about Michigan State and Michigan, it doesn't matter what the records are. What the records are, those kind of go out the window because this is a battle to see who is the best college football team in the state of Michigan. So this is a game centered more so on emotions than the X's and O's, and that's what makes it so special. I think the thing that stands out about the, the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry is that there are so many people that are so passionate about it at every single level you can think of. And so uh, when you have that much passion, it, uh, it transcends, I, I think, any other game that uh, you can play. So it's just a, a singular moment uh, for the state, for each school. I, I just think when you have that kind of passion, uh, it just makes it an event. That passion has fueled this rivalry since its inception. And each year, it seems that there is more on the line than the year before. And MSU's recent success against the Wolverines has catapulted the Spartans to the top of the college football world. Covering the team for as long as I did, you, you, you would look back at what Michigan State accomplished, say, in the 50s and 60s, and how they were a dominant program. And they were their peer group was, were the Oklahomas, the Alabamas, the Texases, the Southern Cals, those kinds of things. And then there was that period where that wasn't the case. And I think what Michigan State's dominance over Michigan these past uh, eight years has, has done is raised Michigan State back up to that level of national prominence. So what I think the really neat thing about this stretch is that uh, Coach D'Antonio has helped create takes us back and shows us what it, what Michigan State was like in the 50s and the 60s when they were rulers of college football. And uh, probably a lot of people didn't think that would ever happen again. And it has, and it's been sustained, which is, uh, and sustained through that Michigan game, I think that's the, the pivot point or the junction that uh, has linked this Michigan State program back to the glory years that uh, people enjoyed you know, a long time ago. Coach D'Antonio has totally changed the culture. And when you look at historic numbers here, when you talk about this Michigan and Michigan State rivalry, Michigan is a team that at one point won 14 straight years. So for Michigan State to win seven of the last eight, I don't think people really have, have took a step back and, and really evaluated that. I mean, Mark D'Antonio was really coming here and made this game a priority, if it already it wasn't, you know what I mean? A priority every single year to, to get up for. And it's so special. And what I love about Coach D'Antonio, I mean, you know, he he gets this, uh, th this rep for being so serious. And there's a reason why. Because when he inherited this program, it wasn't at the level where it is now. We weren't talking about, you know, going to a college football playoff or, or going to a Rose Bowl, you know what I mean? To get to that point, you have to approach it with a hard hat. And he is he has totally made sure that that emotion has trickled down from top to bottom, no matter who you're talking about who's affiliated with this Michigan State football program. I think that's a really special thing. Success obviously breeds success. Uh, it happens at, at the player level, I think at the coaching level, and at the program level, at the fan level. And what they've done winning these, uh, these games the way they have over the, these recent years is just almost unprecedented. So I'm from Traverse City, Michigan, a uh, beautiful place to grow up. You know, we have the water right here. We have Cherry Fest in the summer. Downtown is, you know, insanely nice. There's always new things popping up. 
So just a lot of great memories growing up here and also football uh, is pretty big here. So um, had a lot of fun doing that as well. Um, a competitive place to grow up. So you know, I'm just so thankful to be from a place like this. If you're a member of the Bulla family in Traverse City, it's not a question of if you'll be a football player, but when. And for the latest in the chain of great Michigan State Bullas, Riley has made his presence felt and his name known on Saturdays in East Lansing. But that wasn't always the case. I started playing football in third grade, as a Bulla especially. Uh, it's just kind of part of us. It's what we do. Obviously, football is big in my family, uh, so you kind of just jump right into it when you're young. When I was growing up, I was, I was really small, so it was tough. Um, physical, you know, in third, fourth, fifth grade, you're still getting knocked around, but I guess that's what we love about it. Uh, so, you know, it was always a lot of fun. It was always competitive, and I think that's just what we love about the sport so much. With football coursing through his veins from an early age, Riley drove to elevate his name to the likes of the family members before him. He started his journey at Trevor City St. Francis, and it was during that time as a gladiator that he began to develop into the player that he is today. Going to St. Francis, there's a lot of tradition there and there's a lot of pride. And when I was playing there, it's old school. Um, you got the old school practices, how you, how you, you know, go about those when you're in the weight room, things like that. Uh, so you definitely got to be willing to work uh, going to St. Francis, and we understood that. You know, we had a great group of guys uh, from my freshman year all the way through my senior year. We had guys that wanted to work um, and wanted to be a part of that tradition, that, that kind of old school type of football. Um, and that's what we did, and we had a great time doing it. As a standout at St. Francis, Riley's play on the field began to draw attention and eventually offers from colleges throughout the Midwest. But when it came time to make a decision and sign on the bottom line, it was simple he followed in his family's footsteps. Yeah, when I got my offer from uh, Coach D'Antonio, it, it was one of the best days of my life. Um, growing up a Michigan State fan, watching every Saturday um, during the fall Michigan State games, um, being able to you know, be a part of the team now and being a captain on the team is, just, is, is really a dream come true. Barnett calls the defense as Rudock in trouble, and he'll be taken down back at the 18-yard line. Riley Bullo, the middle linebacker. Yeah, I like to think that, you know, I bring you know, toughness to the table when I play football. Remember, he can run it. Beckard looking over the middle. Intercepted. Unbelievable. These two teams are laying. You know, I think when you have that, it makes the game a little bit more fun, too, when you're playing it. And you can get other guys involved um, and really just have fun out there. You know, football is a tough game. Uh, it's hard work. It's physical. Sometimes it hurts a little bit. But if you, if you can bring that aspect of, you know, fun and high energy into it, it's really a special game. You know, Riley Bullo is another one of the Bullos, and he followed Max here as a, uh, his brother Max here as a, as a middle linebacker. Outstanding athlete. Some people may or may not remember we moved, we moved him to tailback in 2012 for the beginning of the 2013 season. Uh, he actually played a little bit of tailback in the first game in 2013, but we flipped him back to linebacker, um, and he's been a, um, a staple for our defense really in the last three years. But makes all the calls, makes the checks, extremely aggressive guy, very athletic, uh, can rarely run, um, and uh, he's a seasoned guy. and. Uh, he brings a lot of leadership to our football team and especially to our defense. Well, you know, obviously he's an older player now, uh, understands our defense, and allows him to play fast and be very vocal, which leads to his leadership. You know, I think the guys have a, a comfort level with Riley and uh, to go along with being a tough guy and a really good football player uh, makes him kind of the complete package for us. Riley's become a leader of the Spartan defense both on and off the field. And while his easygoing, fun personality off the field might not seem intimidating, once he dons the green and white, he becomes someone else entirely. Any great football player uh, can let that other guy out when he's on the field. Um, it's something that Coach Barnett always talks about, is you can be a nice guy off the field, you can do what you gotta do, but once you get on the field, you gotta let that other guy out. Um, and you gotta you know, kind of be an animal in a way. And I think the greatest football players have done that. That other guy's got to come out on Saturdays, you know, and the thing that Riley does, he brings it to practice too. Um, I mean, there's not very many days that he's down. Uh, typically, he, he plays like he practices, and you've got to prepare to win, and, and that's what he does.
Although Riley has spent his past five years in East Lansing, he always finds time in the summer to get back to his roots and back home to Traverse City. Yeah, coming back here in the summer um, is awesome. You know, for me, I get to work out with my buddies at our high school gym, uh, run on our stadium that we played on together. Uh, so to have that bond, to share that with them, and that bond with Traverse City um, is just awesome to be able to call, call this my hometown, be able to go out on the water, come back here, is a really, you know, something that, you know, I don't take for granted. Now, like many bullets before him, Riley's time in East Lansing is running out, and Riley wants to make the most out of the time he has left. Yeah, being a captain on this team, uh, it means the world to me. Um, that my peers would, you know, vote me into this position um, and be able to represent them, um, but also the university as a whole. Uh, Michigan State University has a lot of tradition. So being able to, you know, to represent that in any way that I can um, is truly a blessing. You know, for me, being a Spartan is everything. Uh, I feel like it truly is part of my DNA. Uh, my family has, you know, a lot invested in Michigan State over the years, the past, you know, 60 years or so. Um, so being a part of that um, is something that I'll cherish forever. Good day, everybody, from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. It's the annual battle for bragging rights in the state of Michigan, the 109th meeting between Michigan State and Michigan. The Spartans looking for their fourth straight victory in this series, but the Wolverines, number two in the country, heavily favored in this one, and Spartans know they're better than their record. They get a chance to prove it today against an excellent team. Shotgun snap to Tyler O'Connor. Crossing pattern catch by LJ. He's got a first down. LJ Scott out to the 39 yard line, and this crowd loves it. RJ Shelton in motion left to right. Hand off to LJ. Big hole at right tackle. LJ fights his way to the five yard line. Second down and goal. Tyler O'Connor backs up into the shotgun with LJ to his right. Hands to LJ, blocker in front, it's Prescott line. He walks into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans draw first blood against the Wolverines. Tyler O'Connor's gone all the way at QB. He's under center. Waits for the snap from Benny McGowan. Hands it off to LJ, trying the right side, breaks out of a tackle. Running room at the 35, angles to his right at the 40, and is finally hit near the sideline by Delano Hill. RJ set left, second down five at the 46 of Michigan. Hand off to LJ. LJ at the 35, angles his way to the left sideline inside the 30. Long field goal try now, a 52 yard try for Michael Geiger. Long enough, wow. it's good! Michael Geiger blasts it through the uprights. Our score at the half. Michigan 27, the Spartans 10. Spartans have to stop the Wolverines to give themselves a chance to win this football game. Spate steps back to throw. Throws it across the field, it's gonna be picked off. The Spartans get a pick. It's Darian Hicks finally out of bounds in Michigan territory at the 38. The work he starts is tight end. Josiah Price in motion right to left. Waits for the shotgun snap with L.J. Scott to his right. Runs away from pressure, winds up and throws the ball downfield. Leaping grab by R.J. at the 20-yard line of Michigan. First snap after, winds up, throws, right pylon. Catch is made by Monty Medeiros. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Third and three, just inside the 45-yard line of MSU. Inside handoff, and Davion Smith is hit down. No gain, folks. Malik McDowell makes the stop. Corley and Josiah set left. Tyler throws, and so a nice leaping All grab right. made by Donnie Corley. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans show no quit. You've got to love that. Our final score reads Michigan 32, the Spartans 23. Michigan State with nothing to be ashamed of here. A hard fought win for the Wolverines. Great crowd today. Great ball game. 
Uh, first of all, you know, any way you, you, you cut it, um, you got to win in games like this. But I um, you know, congratulate Michigan on what they were able to accomplish today. They made plays down the field. Um, you know, the, the crux of the football game is fourth and one in the first half. We've got to make it and continue our drive. Um, you know, first to go on the, on the goal line in the second half, miss a field goal. Those are points off the board. Um, you know, we had another set of points come off the board at one point and, uh, and then on defense got to get off the off the field a little bit so uh, very proud of our football team's effort uh, we kept battling kept fighting thought we had opportunities at certain times during the game to win a football game but you got to make plays and too many third down conversions on their end we were able to run the ball on them uh, which was a big positive got to pass it more effectively in the first three quarters um, made some things happen in the in the um, in the fourth quarter but uh, our guys kept fighting effort was there um, but uh, at the end of the day, you got to execute a little bit better.